Hey, what's going on, crypto people? Happy freaking, what is that? Talk that talk Thursday. It is. It is Thursday. Very, very cool. Listen, I'm going to get into a couple of things here with uh, my guy, Mickey B. Fresh, my dudes, King Solomon and Darren Moore, all about Flair Network. I'm going to I'm going to go over um, uh, what I think is a hugely promising project in the Root Network and um, um, uh, the different features over there, especially the bridge. Right. We want to be able to uh, bridge XRP to the Root Network. We want to be able to bridge from the Root Network back to the XRPL. Interoperability is going to be a big deal. Do not sleep, my friends, on the XRPL. EVM, not Ethereum. It's the XRPL EVM. Right? That's what it's called. It's the XRPL EVM sidechain. Right? And so, which, you know, a bunch of people hop and they leverage and they leverage the EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine. Right, not the blockchain, right? It's the virtual machine to give you access to all the stuff that's in the blockchain, right? So do not sleep on that. It's massive, massive, massive. Um, I'll cover Hex Trust just a little bit in this video. So let's let let us not forget that Hex Trust integrated into the XRPL. It's no different than what happened with Flare Networks. Just on a side note, integration. Right? You can call it a partnership, you can call it a, an agreement, whatever. But it's the same thing. right? So, But I'm going to cover that. It's pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to cover that um, as well. I'm not going to go over the market because, you know, the market's just doing what the market does. I'm not going to go over no Bitcoin is 66, it's a 65, it's a 64. Oh, by the way, on a side note, my guy, High, high Altitude Investing, has already switched. <laughs> Uh, he's already switched from bear to bull. It was just days. It was like 72 hours, maybe four days. <laughs> maybe four days of bull switched. I mean, of bear switched to bull. I watched the video yesterday. Dude's back on the bull thing. So, But he's a trader. He knows the top of the market to sell. He knows, you know, he can spot, you know, within minutes, the ability to, to short and short for three days and make all kind of money. Do made over six figures shorting. Okay. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> right. But you got to know that you got to be that trader. Most retail investors, they're going to find out on the third day of his videos of being bear. He's going to, he, they're going to find out on the last day. <laughs> and then the, the bear thing's over. You, you understand? So anyway, it is what it is. Let's go over this. Awesome interview here with uh, our dudes, King Solomon from Genfinity, Darren Moore, and Hugo Filion. Answer some questions, a little back and forth, cover a few things here for you. And then we're going to get to our guy, Mickey B. Fresh, sharing the prowess of Flair Networks and the stable coin, the USDX. And then I'm going to show you guys how to bridge to, bridge for, from the root network. And from the root network back to the XRPL. XRPL to the root network, we're actually it's Ethereum to the root network, root network to the XRPL. We'll show you all that stuff. We'll show you how to get your XRP to root network. Show you how to get it back. Easy freaking peasy. All right, let's get into this. Shout out to my dudes. Essentially, um, the most trust minimized bridge where you know that the funds on the bridge are protected by more collateral than. Uh, that has been bridged. He's talking about Lair Clake, right? And that bridge, right? FS, that's the whole thing, right? So their Flare Network for me, right, is um, they believe, and we'll find out, they have a better way. They have a better way doing the bridge. They have a better way of providing data. That's just their promise. And we'll find out if that's accurate, right? When these things get live, Right. Um, the agents can, can, can ka-ching. They can freaking ka-ching in this thing here. So can regular retail, but the, F, the, the agents can ka-ching here in this economy. We'll see if that's the, right? This is the promise. We'll see if they deliver on that promise, right? Flood Network is the promise of, right? And so we're looking forward to seeing what they get 
uh, what they actually bring, right? What they're going to bring to this thing. They have, they believe they have a better bridging and they have a belief and they have a belief and they believe that they have a better way of providing data, right? Um, I know some people who are very, very smart are massively big on flare networks, right? So let's see. But I want to point out a couple of things in this video here. I thought this whole thing was an hour and a half, but actually it's not um, with Hugo. It's only like 30 minutes of Hugo, which is um, cool. That's a good, you know, you can take, get your favorite libation and check out Hugo. So on um, the XRP ledger was voting for burn to mint and they, they turned it down. Does that affect Flair's bridging capability in any way? Does it, would, would burn to mint? No, no. No, uh, burn to mint was just a mechanism by which I, I think it was something to do with Zaha. Uh, Zaha. Zaha. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Sorry. Um, but it's basically you could burn your XRP and Zaha would give you a token and on the other side. Um, but that's not at all the F asset bridging model. Uh, it's com completely different. We, we can we can feasibly apply F assets to any 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 chain um, with any protocol. It really doesn't matter. Um, we won't. We will only apply them to really only apply them to chains that are really worth doing. Yeah, I'm curious. Um, obviously, coming out of well, a good amount of the community being you know the. The XRP community has kind of flare launched and everything else. And see, that's an important thing to, to, to kind of note too with the burn to mint, right? The burn to mint thing is just, it was just a mechanism. It's the it's XRPL mechanism, it's a how network mechanism. And my understanding is that the whole burn to mint thing is done, it's toast. Anyway, like it's, uh, it, you know, I, I remember um, we'd say when kind of, kind of announcing burn to mint done, it's over. Um, nothing, nothing more to say there and the reason for this is because they knew that two-way things were going to be in it two you, you don't need to be burning your xrp to get some other you know it's a how to right or to hop on as a, a how network that didn't make any sense so two-way bridges in inoper interoperability this is the way going for it. i mean period point you know this whole you know <laughs> i can hop on one thing but i can't hop i can't hop back that's not gonna work that is not going to work. All right. So King Solomon here is about to bring up uh, XRP and the XRP community. It's interesting. What are your views on, you know, XRP, uh, utility of XRP, things like that, uh, the ecosystem as a whole, just in maybe in broad strokes? So uh, I've, I've always, uh, I mean, I've been fairly strong on my views. And um, uh, th th I'm trying to, Kind of a new leaf and not 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 make the uh, uh, cast dispersions on other ecosystems xrp included uh but at the same time i think look we're building towards being able to use xrp with DeFi. with you know lend your lend your xrp uh take pope's positions in your xrp um you know buy assets with your xrp that you can't buy on main chain uh Put uh, put your XRP in a deck so you get liquidity, put, you know, liquidity incentives, uh, things like that. So you know, full fundamental DeFi ecosystem. I think with XRP, you know, the fundamental use case of XRP, which is this uh, bridge asset between two real world currencies, like I, I think it's materialized somewhat, but not enough uh, for it to be like a, a viable uh, for the value of XRP to be to to really be reflected in. Um, in, in the amount of business that's being done. Look, it's 1,000% correct, right? In my opinion, he's 1,000% correct. And ultimately, look, I 97, 98% of us here in this digital asset space ecosystem or the XRP and XRPL ecosystem are merely, merely, solely, solely, XRP holders, right? Not content creators, uh, not um, sponsored, uh, have sponsorships in the digital asset space, not um, on link to, right? Not, right? Vast majority are XRP holders. And what we're hoping to have happen is have the value of the asset that we hold in near, dearly beloved, accrue value, gain value. Any other way that's going to happen is from creating demand 
for the asset. Flare Networks, you know, there's this thing, Flare Nap, Flare Labs, and, you know, right? Flare Labs is a, is a thing. Flare Network is a sub, kind of like the subsidiary of that thing, if you will. They figured out a way to do some stuff. They got a data provision thing, but they also built a, a, a layer one blockchain called Flare Networks. You got to get that, right? And it's kind of two things in one, right? Hugely, hugely important. And th what they're looking to do is create demand for Bitcoin and XRP. And what, why do I say that as opposed to providing utility for smart contracts? Because ultimately, we're here for the uh, value accrual of our assets. Bitcoin has limited utility. XRP has limited utility. They're providing a way to be able to use the S XRP in different ways. Be able to use it in different things. That's what this whole FS asset thing is ultimately uh, about it's ultimately about and here's the thing that I will tell you Flare Networks has two three two or three things now they got liquid staking on with Scepter they got the Enosis thing doing their thing over there they got um uh I said Scepter what's the other one Kinetics which is going to be a lending and borrowing thing on Flare Networks which means that your FX your your XRP will be able to be used in those platforms for whatever services they provide there. Which will include, you know, I don't know how many decentralized exchanges is going to be there. Gnosis is there. I don't know how many others. There may be another one that comes as well, right? And Gnosis is formerly Flare Finance, right? Uh, so you got to, those are use cases for the asset XRP. Use cases for the asset XRP, you, lending and borrowing, um, uh, Scepter. I imagine you're going to be able to do some stuff there, some form of, I don't know, maybe some form of staking with your FXRP over there. I don't know, but Scepter is a liquid staking thing, right? So we'll see how it goes there. But the point is more utility. And Flare Networks, in my opinion, is ahead of the game in terms of utility in crypto in the crypto space for the asset XRP. They're ahead of any other company that might value the asset XRP and, 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 and choose to use that asset in the crypto space, outside of the crypto space, whatever. You understand? <laughs> That's what's going on, in my opinion. That's what it is. Um, Flare Networks, in my opinion, is ahead on that. We'll see. We'll see. It ain't live. F asset thing ain't live yet, is it? Right? It's coming up on, you know, we're getting ready. We're about to be able to, well, we're testing it now, right? Mint Redeem playing around with it, right? I don't know how many days they're going to do it. Six, seven, 10, 14 days. Don't know. But we're testing that stuff out to see what's good. I did, I did some today. Um, I did some minting today. And it takes like five minutes to ask this final step to get done. I don't know if it got done or not. I know there was a little hiccups with minting earlier. But the bottom line to it, more utility for the asset can create demand for that asset. Right? Bottom line. Uh, so you know, you have a relatively small amount of transactions of XRP relative to the market cap of XRP. Uh, transactions for that specific use case, that is. Um, I think XRP is a good payments network, um, but in order for any asset to have value, uh, it has to have a market around it. It has to have economy around it. It has to have like reasons why you would, why you, why people need to borrow it, like uh, reasons why people need it, you know, for other things. And that's what we're trying to achieve by bringing XRP into DeFi. It's it's, it's a wonderful answer, and it's a straightforward, and it's a it's an honest, it's a straightforward, and it's an honest answer, right? And so. Um, I appreciate that coming from Hugo as well. And, and I think a lot of people who are XRP holders, for some reason, I'm just, I'm baffled by it, seem to think that Flare Networks is anti-XRP. I'm, I'm baffled by that. 
and why people would think that. I, here's the thing that I do know. <laughs> if Flare Networks happens to be uh, available and linked to, that will change. <laughs> right? It'll change then. But right now, it's not. So, anyhow, I don't want to get on the uh, the XRP entertaining content creator. Can you talk about um, the regulatory landscape and what you think about uh, MICA as well as the U.S.? No, don't want to hear that one. Um, he did say that he's going to have, um, they're going to be doing an uh, uh, incentive event uh, once everything kind of gets up and running to bring liquidity onto the Flare Network. So, he said it. We're still wondering if that's going to happen in the Ripple XRPL ecosystem. We, Davis said it. We'll see. CEO of Rip, uh, Flare Network said they're going to do a, a, an incentive to bring liquidity. Watch this video. Watch this video. It's only about 30 minutes of or so. Well, that looks like 40 minutes. It's about 40 minutes with Flare uh, and Hugo. Well worth the thing. But in that 40 minutes, he talks about doing the, the uh, liquidity event as well. So you got the burn them in thing covered and why it, it just really doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to show you the, the backwards and forth with bridging XRP from root network to the XRPL network, Ethereum network to root network, uh, because it's important to understand that people like Moy Finance, people like uh, root net, uh, the root network and Futureverse, they're all look more right. They're all looking to bring utility to the digital asset that we hold, which is XRP, which will allow for an opportunity for a demand of the asset, which can eventually lead to the asset appreciating in value, right? Which is what we uh, all want, and ultimately, I think it would be great to get to a place where we can just lend the XRP, which is going to be pretty pretty cool. Just lend it, get a little get a little interest. And not have to spend it right. Uh, when you want to live in the dirty, nasty fiat world, uh, you can borrow against your asset, right? Um, which is really, really cool. I've been doing it for for years. Um, rather than spending uh, the XRP, I just borrow against it, and we, you know, we go on trips, we we do whatever, right? And uh, it's you know, because we're kind of like, um, well, my better half is a foodie, and so instead of the the you know vroom, vroom, vroom stuff. <laughs> we just we like to pick up and go right pick up and go here pick up and go there and spend 30 days that's kind of what we do uh but we don't spend our assets to to do that right so that's just our model just kind of how we do it and uh, we lend xrp we earn we earn for lending that xrp and there's going to be more options for lending maybe hopefully better um interest for lending safer uh, for lending, you know, those type of things, as opposed to the centralized exchange that was Celsius Networks, Black, BlockFi, Nexo, that, you know, ran away with our stuff. You know, we, we can operate in places that is uh, non-custodial, um, that, that run based on the smart contract, even though the UI interface of Kinetics is uh, there. You'll be, it's right, non-custodial, and you can enter into a lending smart contract arrangement and you'll be able to get out of there when you need to get out of there, right? So um, just like, um, for example, um, something like Wan Chain, you can get an enter in a Wan Chain, right? There's Wan Chain um, Inc. <laughs> but you enter a smart contract when you when you when you lend there. Pair point blank. You, 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 there's parameters. You lend. You borrow. There it is, right? Uh, uh, and the good thing about a lot of times when you lend, it's not um, it's not kind of uh, in the smart contract world, you don't necessarily have to be in in some terms. You know, there's a there's a rate to lend and there's a rate to borrow. And the only thing that's taking place in the borrowing thing is if it's ten percent, it's going to be ten percent APR, right? Um, and if it's not, uh, there are no payment structures right now. Three month, uh, you know, term, uh, three months, six months, nine months, one month, twenty four months. One year, rather, 24 months, 36 months, right? But uh, apparently in the XRPL, there's going to be there's going to be some things like that, uh, some term stuff. Uh, but ultimately, you know, for me, smart contract, non-custodial lending and borrowing, um, 
is the way. I'm not interested in hooking up with uh, the centralized stuff any longer because it's just, um, there's too many factors um, that can allow for failure. It can be incompetence that leads to the failure. It can be just not good people that can lead to the failure. You understand? With smart contract and computer computer code, there is no, there's no incompetence. There is no, uh, you know, long, long as you check the code, make sure there is no back doors and all that kind of stuff like that. But uh, again, I tell you guys all the time, I was in two situations of lending XRP. One was completely decentralized smart contract. One other one was centralized, which a bunch of stuff, customer support and all that other kind of stuff. The centralized one took all our took all our stuff. The decentralized one did not. I'm, you have to make your own decision, but I'm just I'm giving you the real, you know, trying to keep it above that. That's what it was. That was my experience. That was my experience. And so, uh, you know, with things on Flare, Flare Network is about decentralization. They're not hooking up with people who aren't into it, right? And so, the decentralization, uh, the whole non-custodial thing. Um, you know, where the, the, essentially the risk is in the smart contract, kind of go with that, kind of go with whether or not a bad guy can hack the code, kind of go with that. Um, because centralized stuff can get hacked as well. So there it is there. So let me go over to my guy, Make It Be Fresh here, um, sharing some stuff about Flare Network, maybe. Now you go to Make It Be Fresh on YouTube. Um, check this dude out. It, it's just in the know. So I'm ship everything, Flare Deep Dive on a stable coin. Let me see. And we're going to listen to Hugo explain why this has profound impacts on the F asset system. But really, the most exciting thing for me is 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 the USDX is use in something we call the F asset protocol. Now the F asset protocol kind of removes that need to trust the person signing the transaction across chains. It does that effectively by making that person have an awful lot to lose if they don't do their job properly. Uh, and that that what they have to lose is the collateral they've put in a vault. And in the F asset system, that proportion of S assets is split between uh, a stable coin uh, or a stable coin claim receipt like CUSDX um, and uh, native, so Flare, so the two assets that are securing that transaction across chain uh, and, and retaining the value of uh, the bridged uh, Bitcoin or XRP, uh, the collateral underpinning the value of that token when it's on Flare or indeed bridged from Flare to another chain uh, is a combination of stables and Flare native. Um, and it'll probably start out somewhere around 2x uh, over collateralized. The problem with over collateralization um, especially when it comes to stable coins. So if you think about the collateral that you're holding with Flare, uh, the collateral component that is Flare within the vault, uh, that yields because you can delegate that. You can delegate that to the TSO provider. Uh, and so that means you can get yield on that. What we haven't been able to do is, uh, until now, find yield on USDT, USDC, because uh, there haven't been you know, uh, protocols that uh, enable uh, you to get uh, do what you're doing with um, uh, with Clearpool uh, and get that treasury yield. But now, uh, with the use of USDX and CUSDX, it means that the collateral that will sit under the F assets can be fully yielding both the flare and the stable coins. Uh, this has some really amazing effects. It means that we are more likely to get more collateral in the system, mm -hmm. enabling the creation of more units of F assets. Um, it also means that the bridge fees should be lower because there's less need uh, for very, very high bridge fees. So when you mint and, re and redeem your token, um, you, you pay a fee. Uh, and when you use the token on Flare, a very, very small transaction fee goes to the collateral providers because uh, the, the system must remain secure. And the only way it can remain secure is by incentivizing the collateral providers to keep their collateral there. Uh, so by bringing CUSDX in as collateral, it really resolves uh, one of the my biggest fears for the F assets was that it was too capital inefficient. Mm -hmm. Because it allows a 
you know, a, a person with collateral to be fully yielding at all times and collect the mint fees and collect the redeem fees and collect the trail transaction fees. So that's a bunch of stuff, right? In other words, there's a bunch of incentives to provide collateral in Flow Networks. It's a bunch of incentives to participate in Flow Networks. They have a nice flywheel going on there, right? It, right. In theory, we gotta we gotta we gotta let it play out. But earning these different fees meant redeem freaking transactions for provide collateral. You know, it's like he just mentioned, just rattled off four different ways to earn for providing collateral, right? Um, he also mentioned the fact that if you hold USDC, you can earn, you're earning that yield. You can earn a part of that yield, 4% uh, yield and four, and then 4% in FLR tokens. The FLR tokens come from um, um, uh, the foundation in terms of, I don't know if it was a grant or whatever it was. That's how it's going to be done for the first 12 months. It is going to be interesting to see the revenue that Flint Networks generates and uh, uh, in order for that, will they be able to continue after that first year of holding uh, USDX um, uh, to continue to provide that 4%. I don't know. Maybe it goes down. I don't know. We'll see. But for the first year, this is what it's going to be. My guess is um, that 4% uh, uh, on USDX to 4% in Flare, which a total 8% or so. My guess, I don't know. Who knows? But my guess is that 4% will, will either um go to half or it will go to zero after 12 months that's my guess again i don't know but that it will be my guess treasury yields around four and a half five percent you know kind of call it the risk-free rate if you will uh in in the markets and t-bills and us etc so that's probably what's going to happen though it was a one-year deal it's kind of get in when you can fit in take advantage of the extra incentive to participate in the ecosystem, right? So that's what it feels like to uh, to me. Uh, and 12 months is a, is a good amount of time. Right now, currently, um, uh, through Hex Trust, et cetera, it's kind of like a KYC. It's kind of whatever they got requirements to get that USDX. Um, shortly, I don't know when, week, two weeks, two months, um, there's a Gnosis DEX will have a way for you to, you know, get your USDX as someone, um, as a regular retail investor, right? Um, to be able to get that and be able to get the yield and stuff like that. So um, I don't know when they're going to get it, but it's coming, okay? Um, it's going to come for retail. So check out this video for sure. Hopefully I'll remember to leave the link in the description of Mickey B. Fresh's video, but you can go to mickeybfresh.com and uh, mickeybfresh.com. You can go to Mickey B. Fresh on YouTube, and find this video here. It's really, really good. I listen to all of it. Really, really good. It's hour and 15 minutes, but because uh, he goes back and forth with Hugo um, as well and covers some other interviews of people interviewing Hugo um, as well. A lot of these big and lofty promises here, lofty, lofty stuff here. And so um, it's going to be good to see uh, them be able to follow through on these promises because it's, um, for me, uh, I think this is a game changing layer one for me. I just, it's game changing and, um, they got a model. It's a nice flywheel model that I think is important. You go to DeFi llama.com. You got, you got plant platforms, for example, that'll have a lot of TVL. They have a lot of total value lot in the, on the platform, but they're not getting, they're not generating fees. They're not creating a revenue. Right. Uh, uh, right. You, that's that's not optimal. And it looks like Flare Networks has. Um, and let me show you, it looks like Flare Networks has a model to create liquidity, to create fees and to create revenue. OK. <laughs> right. So that's important to me when you look into. Uh, uh, to me. When you're looking to, uh, what do I want to say? Hop on a chain and or hold that chain's asset, right? The native token, right? So this is an example. This is DeFiLama.com. Just, just an example. This is the overall ecosystem of DeFi um, right now, right? And Lido, a liquid staking platform is number one. So right, right now, currently, we're in a little bit of a 
you know, we dipped quite a bit. DeFi dipped quite a bit. It was over 200 billion at one time. Um, currently, it's at 100 billion, right? Lido, the liquid staking for ETH, for Ethereum, is the leader currently, currently in um, DeFi in terms of TVL. Three, uh, 33.7 billion, right? You can see over here, it says fees. They create 3 million in fees, okay? You see over here in revenue every 24 hours, it is uh, 307,000. Eigenlayer, which is kind of restaking. So you restake your liquid staking tokens. <laughs> is 18.5 billion. But look over here. But right now, they don't have any recorded fees. No recorded revenue, right? Is to me massively important that you're able to do that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> to me, right? So I'm not getting this token, but if I was to get the LDO token, you know, I would consider that. I would come over to DeFi Llama and what's your model, man? You got some fees and you got some revenue going on. It's important. I can layer again, no fees, no revenue, right? Uh, Ether.5, 6 billion in TBL. Right, currently, no fees, no recorded fees, no recorded 24 hour revenue. Right, these things uh, are important. And Flare Network, once it gets fully launched, you'll be able to see the stuff that's going on. Right, you'll be able to see. In Camino, Camino is one that I, I'm, I'm on. I participated on. It has a billion in TBL right now. They're not generating any fees, any revenue. Right. So, and it looks like to me that Flare has figured that out, which is really, really cool. We'll see. We got to get it. We got to get it recorded. We got to get the numbers in. Well, from listening to many interviews with Hugo, looks like they have what they you know, Mickey B. Fresh calls a nice economy and you know, you know, or marketplace around there uh, to make some stuff happen. Sorry. Right, so let's get into the Root Network, right? Um, I bring up Root because uh, they are um, again like Flare Networks, like Moy Finance, wanting to bring more use case and utility to the digital asset XRP, right? So for us as holders, this is what I'm going to do. Now, this is what we want, right? So how do I send XRP to the root network? How do I bridge XRP to the root network? How do I bridge uh, from root network back to the XRP, right? Let me show you how to do it now. First thing, first thing we want to do is we got to have um, Zum Wallet. My recommendation, you can try, you could use your ledger, but I recommend the um, Zum Wallet. Right. Uh, if you got your stuff on on the ledger, send some XRP from ledger to the Zum wallet. It's mobile, right? Zum, 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 Zamin now. I said Zum, Zamin wallet. Right. That's the first thing you want. You want the Zamin wallet, and you want MetaMask wallet, and you want the root network on MetaMask. Well, how do you get the root network on your MetaMask wallet? It's really easy. You go to chainlist.org. Right. And and MetaMask, right, you guys, if you want to learn how to get the MetaMask wallet, you go to Google.com, top top in, type in MetaMask and download the MetaMask from Google, from the Google thing. Okay. And you just add it to you add the extension to your browser. So here we are here on chainless.org. And so what I want to do is uh connect my wallet, connect my MetaMask wallet. I'm going to connect my um, my testing um, MetaMask here, right? So it's connected. Then you just type in the root network. Now, remember, root network is EVM, right? It's on Ethereum, the root network, EVM. So you type in the root network there, and there it comes up here. And all you got to do is click add to MetaMask right from there, and then it will be in your... Uh, in your MetaMask wallet, right? It'll be on your MetaMask wallet. So we got that. Now, the other thing that you want to do, which is, a, is, is you know, a little confusing, is you want to get a future pass wallet. So got your root network on your MetaMask, right? So now you want to go to the rootnetwork.com. Type in the rootnetwork.com. It'll take you here. 
got the network, you got the root token, you got staking if you want to stake your root tokens. Right? We stake root tokens. You don't have to do it. Right. So it's the rootnetwork.com. I'm on the ecosystem if I go to home. There it is here. More than just a blockchain, the root network enables seamless user experience and asset interoperability across the open metaverse, right? So this is the root network.com, right? You can go there. You can you can get to the bridge from here. You can get to a bridge from here and all that kind of stuff. Root network bridge. We don't want to go to this bridge. We don't want to use this one. I'm going to give you a, 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 a better root network site to bridge your XRP to and fro. It's a lot better. It's roots. It's, it's a lot better one. This one takes you to one that's um is feels only one direction. Uh but it's probably not, but it feels that way. So so I'm gonna give you a better one. All right. So the rootnetwork.com, you can go there, you can check out some stuff if you want to get the root token, if you want to stake root token, it'll show you how to do that. But we're gonna go about taking XRP and getting it on to the root network, right? So the first thing we want to do to do that is we want to go to futureverse.com, futureverse.com, futureverse.com. Why? Because we want to get a future pass. Now, I have one, so I would just click login. If you don't have one, you got to go to futureverse and create one, right? You can click on futureverse, and you can create a future pass right there. A future pass is like it's the you know the computer version as the way I like it and liken it to the computer version of MetaMask, right? It's the web browser version of MetaMask as opposed to MetaMask being an extension that tracks your assets. The future version is kind of like the web version that tracks your assets that are on the root network. That's what that does, right? So. And this is what you would get to here once you get one, once you get your future pass. It would take you to this and it tells you whatever collectibles that you might have, or the tokens that you might have on the root network. And you can see I have um, on this test thing here, I have 14 root tokens, 20 XRP in my future pass wallet. And the way that you notice this is a future pass wallet as opposed to an Ethereum wallet is all of these Fs. <laughs> see all these F's here. You see these capital F's that lets you know it's your future pass wallet um, address, right? And on the future pass wallet, you can have root token, you can have uh, XRP, you can have silo, you can have um, all kind of stuff on there. Um, Asto tokens, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you can see here, there's a bridge here that is okay. I mean, it's good, it's simple to use. Uh, and you can see I have XRP, this R here says that it's on the root network. And if I mouse over these three things here, I can send uh, XRP from my future pass to my MetaMask Ethereum root network wallet if I want to do that. Or I can do the bridge from root network back over to um, uh, Ethereum. Right from root network over to the Ethereum bridge. If I want to use uh, that bridge, right? So if I hit bridge here, it says switch to Ethereum. I'm not, this is not the bridge for the demo. I just want to show you here. I'll show you the demo one that's a lot simpler to do, to do here. Right. And so you see, it says here token name, XRP from the future pass, but from the root network to uh, XRPL. You can type in an XRPL wallet address here but that's just one way, right? What we want to do is we want to go to this site here, which is app.rootnet.live. And you will connect your wallet here. This wallet that you're connecting, you see how it says 81B here, X0X81B? That's my MetaMask, the root network wallet on the root network, right? So my MetaMask wallet, it's Ethereum wallet. So to bridge to, so we're going to do Ethereum here. To bridge to the root network, we have to send XRP to this. Right? 
we have to send XRP to our MetaMask wallet from our Zen wallet, right? So we would go here to the root network just so that we can see it. Here's the root network because we did that at chainless.org, right? So my little bridging thing worked. But anyway, so there it is. So you see, I got a little bit of XRP here, right? 99 XRP, right? You see that. So to T is for the root network. So XRP there. So we're going to use our MetaMask, I mean, our Xamarin wallet to send XRP here, right? We're going to use the MetaMask wallet to send our XRP. And so the way that you do that is you go to app, app dot rootnet, which is one word, rootnet dot live forward slash, you can do forward slash bridge if you want. You can go to app.rootnet, rootnet, one word, dot live. You see here, it says the root network alpha, and this is the bridge. Now, this said the bridge is not available due to maintenance. I still bridged an XRP both ways using it. So, and I did it with just one XRP. So, you want to go from the Ethereum network, you want to choose the asset. It's going to be, um, choose the, uh, from Ethereum to, uh, wait, where's my thing at? Oh, I'm on the root network. I got to change MetaMask to Ethereum. Change it to Ethereum. I think that's what I need to do. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. So this is my XRP. There's disconnect. Just use this bridge. Hold on a second. What's going on? Every time I try to do a demo, things get screwed up. From the XRPL network to root network. Okay, that's what we want right there. From the XRPL, from the XRPL to the root network. That's what we want. From the XRPL network to the root network. I don't know why I said it there. From the XRPL network to the root network. Now, this is really, really, really simple. You're going to have your Xamarin wallet, right? Again, from the XRPL network to the root network. You're going to have your Xamarin wallet. I'm just going to hit one, right? I'm just going to send one XRP from the XRPL network to the root network, one. And we're going to use is the address, the, the two address, your MetaMask address, right? The MetaMask address. So you would just go and copy copy your MetaMask address and put it in there. So mine is already in there, right? Now what we want to do is hit this generate transaction. So let me get my Xamarin wallet ready. So you're going to hit generate transaction, one XRP from the XRPL network to the root network, generate a transaction. A QR code is going to come up, right? Your QR code is going to come up. See that little Xamarin thing? And then what you're going to do is uh, I hit send one XRP in the Xamarin wallet, done. I hit next, one XRP. And then you use your scanner from your Xamarin wallet. Scan there, connect. You approve it or slide to accept on your Xamarin wallet and you connect that way, right? Transaction says it succeeded, right? So you hit this here. So I am bridging from the XRPL network to the root network, right? And it shows you what's going on here. One XRP, it takes about 12 minutes. I would say it's more like five or seven, but it says 12 minutes. It's the countdown there. One XRP to the from the XRPL network to the root network. Now you can see earlier today, this is what I did. Did one XRP to the root network. And one XRP to the root network. 12 XRP from the root network to XRP the other way, right? This is just kind of some recent transactions. So that's how you do it from the XRPL 
to the root network, right? So here are the steps. You have to have the root network on your MetaMask, right? Chainlist.org, chainlist.org. You connect your MetaMask wallet, right? You type in where it says to search for the network. You type in the root network, it'll come up. You just click on this button here, add to MetaMask, right? That's the important thing. The other important thing is um, the Xamarin Wallet is just great. I'm a Xamarin Wallet Pro. So uh, I think there you can do this with your ledger, but I have the Xamarin Wallet. I recommend that you guys download that, create your wallet, 15, 10, 15, 20 XRP to kind of create that wallet and you can add to it and you can do it that way. Um, so that is the bridge to and from to and from, right? So I did the transaction from the XRPL to the root network. And all you have to do to go from the root network back to the XRPL is you change the from. So you change it to the root network. From the root network to the XRPL. Di desired amount, I'm going to do two this time, two XRP. And uh, it says here, your balance of your XRP, the bridge fee is 4090. Four zeros, so a zero point four freaking zeros. And that might be my eyes too. Yeah, four zeros, nine zero. Four zeros, nine zero XRP to bridge. Okay, <laughs> crazy. Go, look, cray, cray. All right, so there it is, right? To, to from the root network to the XRPL now. And this here, is where you would put your XRPL address. Where do you want it to go? You want it to go to your ledger, you want it to go to your Xamarin, and you put it in there. Um, I wish I had a saved address on here. Hopefully they'll get to a point where they'll have saved addresses where you can put it in here. So um, let's do Xamarin. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna do this. I'm gonna share. Or a copy. What's the easiest way to send it? Just copy it. And let's go to, no, let's do share. Let's see. What happens if I hit share? So you're going to re request XRP in your XAMARIN while I hit share. Let me see if it comes up on my mobile when I hit share. Yeah, so I'm going to just, just so I can have the address, find a place where you can copy it that way. So I'm going to go over here. I don't have a um, notepad of my wallet addresses on my computer. I don't like that. So uh, I just kind of do little stupid little messages. <laughs> and then I can always, you know, delete stuff that way. So you copy it. Copy your address. You go back to the bridge. This is the XRPL address from Xamian. And you put that in there. Or sending and receiving, right? So send it. And now this is going to bridge to XRP over from the root network to the XRPL network. And, and to hit bridge, actually required. Okay. Little MetaMask, little sign. Right. The transaction is, uh, has been admitted to the blockchain and is now awaiting um, formation. So again, you know, root network, you know, kind of Ethereum thing with MetaMask, you know how that goes. Okay, it succeeded and the transaction has succeeded, but now it's going to take about 12 minutes, right? The said it succeeded. There it is right there, 2XRP. 2XRP from the root network, see here? From the root network to the XRPL. Now it says, I'm not getting a countdown on this one. This is interesting to me. So there's no countdown on this. This one says bridged. Let's go to something here. I'm going to go to my events. Yeah, it's it's it already happened. Uh Got a red flag on it, but it already happened here. You go to events, it's already showed up. The two showed up. 
So the bridging back is is pretty quick. Bridging from the root network to the XRPL, kind of very instant type deal, which is cool. So there it is. Very, very cool. So, but you see from one XRP from the XRPL ledger to the root network, still got five and a half minutes for that to happen, right? So just understand that it's about 12 minutes to make that happen. But um, yeah, so I, I wanted to cover another thing here. Let me cover this hex trust thing because I think this is important for people um, to, you know, who may have forgotten. Hex trucks hooked up with um, Flare Networks and Clearpool to get their stable coin, get that thing going on, right? Hex trust, hex trust is massive, big player in the space, right? Big player in the space. But you can see here, hex trust also hooked up with Ondu, right? Ondu RWA play. Hex Trust hooked up with uh, Hex Trust um, launches the Clear Pool on Flare Network, right? So Hex Trust is a big player. The XRPL ledger is integrated into Hex Trust. Hex Trust enhances offerings with the XRP ledger integration. That happened in February. Hex Trust is integrated with the XRP ledger, a decentralized blockchain network managed by a diverse global community of developers and businesses. This partnership enables Hex Trust to enhance its user experience by leveraging the exceptional features and benefits provided by the XRPL. XRPL for Hex Trust. Through the integration of the XRPL into our core custody platform, Hex Safe. We have expanded our support for users within the XLPL ecosystem. This integration grants both current and prospective Hex Safe customers the opportunity to leverage the benefits of the XLPL. What do we offer? Access to the native digital asset of the XRPL ledger, XRP. Other fungible tokens through the enablement of the trust line functionality. Fungible tokens. Support for non-fungible tokens like NFTs by integrating the XLS20 token standard. The ability to make partial payments and integrate raw transactions. Okay, so my thing is uh, that the stablecoin is going to be one of those things. It's my thing, right? Stablecoin is going to be one of those things. And for... Uh, for Ripple. Stablecoin is coming. The RLUSD, Ripple stablecoin is coming. And uh, what Flare has done is enable, by way of Hex Trust and Clearpool, to provide this yield for users on their stablecoin, USDX. And Flare Labs added an incentive of 4% in FLR tokens to make it 8%, 8.7%, which is really nice. I don't see why Ripple could not do the same thing. I don't see why they could not do the same thing. I'm sure that Clearpool would welcome some type of stable coin and hex to, uh, from Ripple to be able to provide the same. I don't see why they could not. We'll just need to find out whether they, whether that's going to happen. We'll, Will Ripple do that? Um, my guess is why, you know, that they would, but we'll see. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're going to provide a 4% XRP incentive. We don't know. My point is, is that they could. We don't know if they're going to hook up by way of Hex Trust. But my thing is, why are they, why is Hex Trust integrated in the XRPL? Feels like a likely conclusion, just like Flare Networks, that Ripple is going to do their stable coin with Hex Trust as well, right? Hex Trust is not, they don't have any, currently it doesn't look like they have any current, um, what is the word, um, exclusive relations or partnerships, right? It's not ex They're not exclusive to one particular chain, company, whatever, right? We see they hooked up with Ondu for a purpose. They hooked up with Flare Networks for a purpose. And they've hooked up with uh, um, the XRPL for a purpose. Right? And so we'll see. Again, for me, there's nothing stopping um, 
it seems likely, I should say, for Hex Trucks to provide their stable coin to their users, their customers, the Ripple stable coin, just like they're offering to their customers, the USDX stable coin. Just kind of makes sense to me. I'm just kind of makes sense. So we'll see. And if they do offer the Ripple stable coin as well, what if it's if it's just a Ripple stable coin, for example, on Hex Trust and um, access to the stable coin? Is Ripple going to give an added incentive for clients of Hex Trust to use their stable coin? Right. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But my point is, it's possible. We'll have to see how it goes. Uh, for me, I can't wait to have access to Flare Network Stable Point. Can't wait for that. Cannot wait. Can't wait. I wish that the um, that well, anyway. I can't wait. Uh, the sooner I can get eight percent on holding stables, the better. I'll take it. I'll take the eight percent. Right. Take it. It's stables. Take it. Now, um, the USDX is going to be, you know, it's going to get into other places. It's going right? to get into other spots. But right now, this is where it is. So I, I would definitely take that for sure. Um, and the main reason, quite honestly, is not the 4% on USDX. It's the 4% of the FLR tokens. It's the 4% of the FLR tokens, baby. That's why I would do it. Of course. Of course. I was just telling uh, my dude, I'm getting ready to spend a few thousand dollars to get a few thousand dollars worth of tokens. He's like, why would you do that? I said, because the, the few thousand dollars of tokens are FLR tokens. He, he didn't know what FLR tokens were. <laughs> but I know what they are. I know the promise. That's why. Because I know you know, $4,000 can be $20,000. I know. I know $20,000 in the, the Flare uh, the Flare network economy, it can be hugely valuable, right? That's why. That's why I'm doing it. If I have to do it. Now, I just get, I did get a little court notice so we'll see. They got my claim. They finally acknowledged. So we'll see. Maybe I'll save a few grand, you know, of attorney fees. We'll see. But yeah, I'm prepared to do that without question. Without question. So there it is, fam. Just wanted to kind of point those things out to you guys. I'm excited about Flare Nets without question. Uh, I think they're ahead of the game in terms of uh, utility for the asset XRP for XRP holders. I think they're ahead of the game. Moy Finance is doing their thing um, as well. Dexfi, uh, dot pro doing their thing as well. Orchestra is doing their thing as well. Anados Finance doing their things as well. Um, and um, those are going to get dwindled down. And uh, there's going to be a Google. There's going to be a Yahoo. There's going to be a freaking um, DuckDuckGo. And there's going to be a pre-search. Isn't that awesome? We got Uniswap and we got Sushi Swap. We got Uniswap and we got Sushi Swap and we got um gosh, I can't remember a third one. I don't know. There's a bunch of them, right? Ethereum decentralized uh, exchange automated market makers on top of Ethereum. Right. So we're, we're gonna have that in the XRPL ecosystem. And the XRPL ecosystem, whether it's a DEX, whether it's a lending protocol, we're going to have a Google, we're going to have a Yahoo, we're going to have a freaking DuckDuckGo, and we're going to have a pre-search. Isn't that awesome? We'll have choices. It's going to be pretty, pretty cool. So excited about that. All right, guys, there it is. This wraps up your XRP Ripple daily news and uh, around zero to 10 minutes. I hope that it has been of value to you. If it has, do me a favor and hit that like button. It's one of the greatest ways to support the channel. And if you happen to be in that about 50% of people that are hanging out, listening to the Crypto Siege and are watching the Crypto Siege and haven't subscribed yet, if you've been enjoying those hangouts, please consider subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to ring that notification bell, baby, so you know whenever we go live or whenever we upload a video. I'm going to end this one like I do all my videos and remind you guys of this. Old money doesn't want you to win. But that's okay, though, because you and I, 
we're already winning. And I would ask you to consider this, perhaps ponder the idea or notion of living your life permissionless. I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.